Hello, this is Scott again. So I'm going to be switching gears a little bit in this channel. I'm going to do a series on um, time series and forecasting in R. So you can see this time we're going to be talking about simple forecasting and it's going to be graphics in R. So this series, I'm going to do quite a few of them and I'm going to keep them short. My goal here is five to 10 minutes. It's going to be hands-on, um, not any theory, um, brief comments on what we're doing and are so that you can learn a little bit about forecasting and uh, time series. So if you want to know, if you want to dive a little bit deeper, this is an excellent reference um, and it covers the theory. It's got some good examples and everything in it. And actually, this is one of the texts that I use for my uh, Master's of Data Science in uh, at CUNY um, City University of New York um, by Hyman and uh, again an excellent resource from from uh, Robin and George here so with that I'm going to jump right into our studio and cover a few things again this is not our tutorial this is not necessarily a uh, our studio tutorial hopefully you'll pick up some of that in the series if you're interested, but um, you can look at other resources if that is your main focus. This, the, this, the focus here, excuse me, is really about time series and forecasting, and we're using R as a vehicle um, to learn that. So I've got a very simple script here. You can see it. It's, it's just a, a few lines long, and we're going to go through here. Again, the goal is to visualize time series, one of the most important parts of analysis in general, but certainly time series specifically, is to understand what's going on with the series. So I, I've got this um, package from CRAN FPP. You can, you can download that, you can get that off of the CRAN library. Um, and uh, we're using, again, our studio here. I've got my script up here on the on the top panel, um, the console I'll be using um, for or, or our studio uses to the commands that I enter. Um, we'll talk about the global environment more next time, um, and then the plot window will be where we see our results. So in in our studio, I can hit Control Enter, and I can that actually executed that particular library command. Um, or as an alternative, I'm going to go ahead and plot some data, and I'm going to select this Run button this time so that you can, can see that. So this particular plot command that I have highlighted is referencing the economy.class um, data frame from, from the library given uh, FPP. And essentially, it's a simple plot and with some labels. So if I run that, I get an, an idea of economy class passengers in Australia, and I can look at the series and um, learn from, from the graph itself. One of the things that I learned is that back in late 1989, uh, traffic went to zero. So uh, probably a, a strike or something was going on during this period. Obviously, if I'm a sub subject matter expert, or um, you know, an analyst, I probably have some domain knowledge and, and know what happened here. And, and so my subjective knowledge correlates with the objective knowledge of the time series itself. I can also look at whether there was a, uh, a particular pattern that was, was in the um, time series. And we'll be talking extensively about trends, seasonal patterns, and cyclical patterns uh, during this um, venture that we're on here. I can see in this period right here from about 90 to 92, that's what we call a trend, right? So an upward trend during those time periods. I don't see a lot of seasonality um, in this data. Uh, we'll get another series next that has a lot of seasonality in it. But essentially, you know, a pattern within a year, week, some sort of um, 
pattern that, that shows up. So with that, I think I want to move to the next series. Um, just the last comment, I, there is actually a break here um, in, in the series as well. So I may want to go back and look at the, the actual data um, and see what's going on uh, here, why there wasn't something recorded. Um, in time series, one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, basically impute or uh, come up with a value between those in the series for, for most of the techniques. You'll, you'll want to handle that particular data problem. All right, so let me show you some data that is definitely um, shows a strong trend, right? We're moving upward from left to right, and there's also a strong seasonal pattern here. Since I plotted by year, I can't really see easily what that pattern is, but I definitely can see that it exists. So I'm, again, using the, the simple plot function within R, um, and just plotting the series, and I can see um, that. One of the nice plots that's available in R is a season plot. So what, what does that look like? This, this is the same data, right? This is anti-diabetic drug sales uh, across the time period from 92 to 2008. And from what I saw previously, it's really highlighted, number one, that there's an upward trend, right? So we're going from 1992 to 2008, and almost every single year, um, we're getting an increase in sales, right? So I can see that here by year. And then I can also see within the year, which I had a hard time seeing before, what this, the series looks like. So for example, 92, I'm dropping from January to February, and then I'm moving upward ever since um, from February to the end of the year. And that happens almost on every single year, right? There's a drop from January to February in sales. Um, most years, I actually have an increase between February and March throughout the year on, on most of these years. But something really weird happened in 2008. I can see it immediately that 2008, instead of coming back up, like the other years typically do, um, it continued to fall between February and March. And that would be an interesting point to investigate why that happened. So that's a seasonal plot. And that now let's look at the month plot function in R. And this provides a lot of the same information that we just saw. The horizontals here are the um, the average for that month across all of those years, this is the same the same exact um, uh, uh, data that I just just plotted. And then I can see some of the things that are happening um, between the different years and, and, and this year. This for this particular data set, this is not all that useful, um, but I wanted to share it with you because for some data, this is really, really telling um, what's going on here. So um, you might want to keep that in your, your toolbox. A couple of other last minute um, comments and plots. The uh, I'm going back to the plot command, right? The, the same one that I used previously, but this time I'm using the jitter um, capability within R. And let's see what that looks like. And that shows me the relationship between carbon footprint and, and miles per gallon here. And so it basically jitters, it, it separates the individual values so that I can more um, easily see that relationship. If I didn't jitter, these, these dots would really kind of be on top of each other um, and it would, wouldn't be as, uh, as informative. So that's the jitter function. I'm now exploring not just a time series, right, but I'm exploring a relationship between um, gas mileage and carbon footprint or, or carbon output. And then lastly, I can use this pairs to come up with a correlation matrix across the, the variables here in this, in this fuel data set. And so I'm looking at correlation plots, scatter plots, bivariate scatter plots between these, these variables.
So I can see that leaders and city, not very correlated, um, but certainly city and highway are correlated. Um, and that the, the carbon footprint and um, city has that, that same drop that we just saw, that nonlinear um, uh, uh, drop, but indirect relationship that is strong there. So hopefully this was meaningful um, for you. It, it is very short. And again, I mean to keep these short. Um, next time we'll be talking about uh, univariate, bivariate relationships, and then the ACF, the autocorrelation function, which um, is going to be a central theme through a lot of this series. So please uh, send me an email. Um, help me formulate this series, what you want to see, and uh, please subscribe to the channel if it makes sense for you. I look forward to seeing you next time.